Uh, welcome to this presentation about Heroku. My name is Chris. Um, I'm a developer advocate at Heroku. This is Brad. He's a support superhero. Uh, we're going to give you a little tour about what Heroku is. Um, and we're going to take questions at the end of the session. Um, and you can also come over to the Heroku booth, which is over in the developer forest on this side. Uh, come see the booth and ask questions there, too. So what is Heroku? Um, how many of you guys know what Heroku is or have used Heroku? Raise your hands. All right. It's a pretty good amount. Good amount, good amount. Um, so for those that, that don't know, Heroku is a platform as a service. Um, and I imagine most of you know what that is, but, but I'll go into a little bit of uh, detail about what that, what that means. So uh, maybe like 20 years ago, um, you know, this idea of the cloud started, started coming up. Um, we didn't call it the cloud back then. It was more like software as a service. Um, and Salesforce was probably the best example of that. They kind of pioneered this, this idea in the late 90s of software as a service. Um, you know, instead of having a bunch of servers that you had to set up yourself or hire an army of consultants to help you set up, you uh, just went online and maybe used a credit card and signed up for, for a service. And you suddenly had your CRM, and it was live, and you could use it. And you didn't have to worry about um, maintaining servers or hardware or things like that. So then, um, you know, that was software as a, ser as a service. More recently, there's now this infrastructure as a service concept, which um, uh, Amazon Web Services has pioneered. Um, so you, know, you can lease virtualized servers for one second or one month or one year. Um, you don't have to actually own this server. And um, you know, when things are quiet in the summer, you don't have to keep this huge, huge amount of capacity left over. Um, so let's see. Uh, so that's, that's kind of what uh, the, next, the next iteration was platform as a service. And so that's where, that's where Heroku provides is let's not let you have to worry about um, even leasing that server. Don't, don't worry about the, where the server is or, or what you have to do with it or maintaining it or um, um, all these decisions, right? Like what operating system should I put on the server? Um, so I'm going to turn it over to Bradley and he's going he's gonna to talk a little bit more about that. Yeah, we have uh, a bit of a Ozzy and Harriet thing going here, so I'm going to kind of jump in more from the customer's perspective because that's who I deal with a lot. Is he loud enough? You guys hear me? Yeah, OK. A little bit louder? Better? OK, cool. <laughs> I'll just project a lot. Leveraging infrastructure as a service definitely takes some of the pain out of the equation. I mean, no longer do you have to have somebody racking and stacking servers in a basement, but you still have servers nonetheless, and you still have to manage them. Even virtualized servers require an operating system, you know, and that takes maintenance and expertise. Do you use Windows or do you use Linux? If you use Linux, which distribution? Now you have a whole host of other problems, too. You have to worry about performance, logging, security. Do you containerize or not? It's really just a lot of stuff to worry about. There's a massive opportunity cost associated with having your developers work on this sort of stuff, whether it's upgrading to the most recent version of Postgres or patching a critical security update at 1 in the morning on a Saturday. Nobody wants to do that. Developers are expensive. And realistically, they should spend their time working on the next big feature that makes your, develop, that makes your customers happy and ultimately earns you more money. So that's what platform as a service is all about. Uh, let's, let's kind of abstract away, abstract away all those decisions um, about the infrastructure and focus on building applications. Um, so Heroku gives you a set of tools to uh, just write code, deploy it really quickly, really easily, and um, roll it out, manage it easily, and scale it as needed. So here's an example of that, right? Uh, say you're, a developer already has some code. Um, can quickly create a new instance on Heroku using the, the Heroku CLI tool. So you can use a CLI, the command line interface, or a web dashboard to control all this stuff. Um, CLI is faster. You, know, you don't have to wait for web pages to load. So I like to use that. Quickly create a new instance. Um, let's see. So there we go. Creating my first app is done. Um, the code I can push to Heroku really easily with just a, a git command. So git push Heroku master. 
Um, this code is PH a PHP app, so we auto-detect the application type based on a few kind of heuristics about what's, uh, what's in the code. Um, sets up the runtime environment, the web server um, version of PHP. Takes care of all the dependencies that you've de uh, defined in your, in your project, in your source code. Um, and there you go. It's live. Uh, we take care of serving it. And every app gets kind of a default URL. You can choose your own name. Um, or or we'll, we'll create one for you that is uh, nice, poetic, and, and beautiful sounding. Um, and of course, you can use custom DNS, too, if you have your own names. So customers love that. Like That's really easy to use. Developers love that, um, which is why, right? As of, as of now, we're like well over um, 11 billion requests per day, handling 11 billion requests per day. Uh, we've had more than 5 million apps created. And, and we've got 150 add-on services to kind of extend the functionality of your application. Databases, email providers, um, some are provided by Heroku and run by Heroku, and some are, most of them are third parties. Yeah, so just a second ago, Chris showed you really how easy it is to deploy an application. But, I mean, let's be honest, application code only takes you so far. Today's applications are complex enough where they really need data connectivity, and extra information. So enter add-ons. Uh, your app might need a relational database to help keep your complex customer and business data organized. Your app might need a document-oriented database to help you gain the benefits of a NoSQL schema. Your app needs full-text search to help deliver your e-commerce catalog lightning fast. Your app needs monitoring to gain deeper insight into the health of your application. Your app needs content delivery to turbocharge your asset delivery. Your app needs an email gateway to keep you reliably in touch with your customers. Your app needs logging to help your developers debug when app goes bump in the night. All this and more with a couple keystrokes. Really, it's, it's amazingly simple to provision. And Chris is going to show you that. Right, yeah, so let's, let's uh, look, on, look into add-ons. Just as easy as deploying code, you can use this, the command line interface. Um, and here, you know, really easily I can add Heroku Postgres to get uh, a kind of rock-solid Postgres service uh, supported and fully managed by Heroku. Um, how about Heroku Redis? So if you need a key value store, uh, maybe to store state among a lot of kind of a horizontally scaled app infrastructure, um, or to manage a queue, you can use Redis. Um, Mongo Labs for your document-oriented database. Uh, Elasticsearch. Uh, we have a few different Elasticsearch providers to make your, say, if you have an e-commerce site you know, and you want the response to be really, really quick for end users when they're searching for things um, in your product catalog. New Relic uh, is a, a monitoring provider. Helps you understand the health um, and dig into exceptions and things like that in your application. Uh, Fastly is a CDN provider. SendGrid for uh, sending transactional emails, like for password reset and new users. And PaperTrail was the last one there. Um, they uh, provide log aggregation. So all of these and more are all available in the Elements Marketplace, which is kind of a um, place where you can see all the different add-ons that we have, kind of broken out by category, see the most popular ones, and browse around for, for what looks interesting. Um, and almost all of them have a free tier. So if you just kind of want to you know, peruse them for, for personal enjoyment, uh, for personal projects like, like I do often, you can um, play around with those and check them out. Um, and then they you know, move up to uh, very, very scalable, um, high redundancy, high availability plans from there. Yep. Uh, so your software, your application is built on an existing stack. You know, we're, we're already talking about PHP, so let's just use LAMP. As an example, Linux, Apache, MySQL, PHP. Your traditional sysadmins and DevOps teams are probably wizards at setting this up. It's very classic. People know a lot about it. But let's say your developers get a wild hair, and they want to try this new idea that involves, I don't know, again, Elasticsearch and maybe an AMQP message queue. This means that a lot of times you have to go talk to the DevOps team, ask them to stand up servers, and you have to go through the purchasing, and but da, da, da. it's a mess for a lot of people, and, it, and it's really kind of a pain. Um, but in this, uh, now, you, uh, when you finally get it stood up, you might actually find out that you can't run Elasticsearch on whatever distribution you're using. It's 
kind of a painful situation. Um, um, yeah, really, it's just discouraging to the team. It puts a big time damper on creativity for your developers, and overall, it's no good. It, it just prevents your app from leveraging the latest and greatest technologies. No good. So <clears throat> Heroku, on the other hand, um, kind of never slows you down. Heroku, we've always been focused on, on um, developer productivity and kind of making your life as a software development professional easy and smooth. Um, so really focused on, on, on making those tools easy for you to use, um, but then also kind of give you peace of mind after they're, you've used them and they're deployed and they're live. <clears throat> so when you're done writing code, uh, when you've got your, your application wired up and it's deployed, um, uh, the next, maybe the next challenge that you'll run into is uh, scaling. So what happens when um, you get a mention in a, in a big newspaper like the New York Times or something, or um, you know, it's Black Friday if you're, if you're uh, an e-commerce provider, um, or a mention on TV, in a TV ad, maybe it's like Super Bowl, you got a big Super Bowl ad or something like that. Um, how do you deal with the sudden, sudden spike of visitors? Um, so here's an example of that. We can really easily, from the command line again, uh, or you can do this from the dashboard, scale up. So right here, I'm scaling up to uh, nine instances uh, from one that we started with. Um, and again, these can, you, know, you can do this on the command line or from the dashboard really easily. And then when I'm done with that, I can really easily scale down. So you know, when, when Black Friday is over, or the Super Bowl ends, and traffic starts to subside, Scale down, save some money, only run on one instance or two instances. So beyond that, um, you, you want good visibility into those 10 or 100 or 1,000 servers that are out there. So Heroku provides um, pretty, uh, a pretty detailed view of health of your application and the hardware that your application is running on. So maybe, maybe you're running um, an instance with half a gig of memory but you're using Node, um, or you're using something that, that likes to have more than half a gig of memory, but you didn't realize that initially. Maybe it was a dependency you're bringing in or something like that. Um, you can monitor this and see if your, your application is starting to blow out memory and maybe run into swap space. Um, so you can manage memory or, or see memory usage here, uh, response time, um, dyno loads like CPU usage. And this is what your, your users are going to notice. How many requests per minute can they handle? Um, you know, if you have a bunch of graphics and JavaScript files and CSS on your, on your site, um, will all those be, be served really, really fast to the end user? So let's jump into a little demo. Um, so to kind of prove that, you know, we're not just making this, making this stuff up here, we're going to do a little, uh, a little live demo and cross my fingers that the, that the internet's working well. So I'm going to jump over to the command line. Um, let me hide this so it's, it's less distracting. And I'll make this one bigger, maybe. How's that? Can you guys read that in the back? If I say, what did I write back there? Back row. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, what we're going to do, we're going we're to deploy a little PHP application, and I'm going to show you how quick and fast and easy this is. So I'm going to make a new directory. Let's call it hello world. You can see that I practiced this before, cd hello world. Um, the simplest hello world you can probably do in PHP, just write hello world to an index.php. Um, make a Git repository out of it. I'm going to Let's say first, whoops, Heroku deploy. So easy. Did I have that? Nope. Git add index. Git commit minus M. We'll use that. Um, all right, so now we're going to create, we're going to use the Heroku CLI now. We're going to create the Heroku instance. So immediately we've created an empty container, and it's, at, it's available at this URL now. If you go to that URL, it would just say, hey, this is an empty app. It's sad. Nothing's here. So we're going to say git push Heroku master. Oh, looks like the internet's working. 
There we go. So this is, this is live, going through the, the actual process I showed you in the slides earlier. Um, looks like it's done. It's launching the app. And we'll open it up, hopefully. Oop. Hide this other stuff so you don't see my secrets. So there we go. There's our Hello World app. It's beautiful, right? Really nice. Yeah, look at that. I don't know about you guys, but I think this could be the next big social <laughs> Snapchat-y viral hit. In fact, I think we just got mentioned on some blogs and uh -oh. we're getting traffic. We're going full Pokemon Go. Servers, get me more servers. All right, check this out, ready? So I'm going to run the, uh, let's see, CD Hello World. So I just did a split screen on my terminal here. I'm going to use the Heroku command to stream the logs from this application to my, to my command lines here. Don't worry about reading all those. I'm going to leave it small. You can read them if you want. But um, watch this now, right? So I can type Heroku PS scale web equals 100. So over here, oops, there you go. You can see it. So right there, what's happening, we're standing up 100 uh, actually, 99, because we had one running already. We're standing up 99 new servers, and they're all going to serve that very, very simple little Hello World app. Um, and it took me maybe 15 seconds and you know, just a couple keystrokes. Um, so we've, you know, we're ready for Pokemon Go now. Hopefully, we get that big. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> we're looking good. So, and you can see, you know, this is still live. Um, here's the app. From the end user, it looks exactly the same, right? They just see. I'm going to make a request to this URL, and we'll handle, Heroku handles distributing the load among all those servers we just started up. Yeah, but I'm looking at that now, and early UX feedback is, well, Times New Roman tiny font isn't great. What can you Not do good. for me there? All right, let's fix that. Let's make it a little bit different. Let's see, I'm going to zoom in on this one. VI. Uh, let's make it bigger. Git add index, git commit, minus m, make bigger. All right, git push. You can even see the logs here. Well, it looks like some people are, uh, have seen the URL and are opening this up on their own. But so on, the, on your left side is the build log going on on the right side is the, the Heroku server logs. Um, so you can see what's happening right now is I just made that change. It was pushed. Um, Heroku received the, the change code. And now it's going out and updating all 100 of those servers to uh, have that updated code. And looks like they're all started up now. Let's go back to our pretty sweet Hello World app. Do a little refresh. And there we go, Hello World in Times New Roman still, but much bigger. Much bigger. Yeah. I like it. So then the last thing that, that I want to show you guys that I mentioned earlier is you know, when, when we're done, we can scale back down to one. So you know, our servers, we're OK. Pokemon Go, Hello World Go didn't really take off. So um, you can see right here, it actually happened really, really quickly. We missed it. It says stopping all processes with SIGTARM, and it's killing all uh, 99 of them and just leaving one up. So there's our close out of that one. Um, and let's look at, you know, one other thing that's pretty cool is, hopefully you can see that. Let's look at the, the I did a, little, did a little math to figure out, like, what's the calculation to, to figure out how much 100 servers just cost us. So $25 a month for kind of our, our base level professional tier server. Uh, $25 a month times, let's say, 30 days in a month times uh, 24. That's bad math. Someone should have told me that. $25 a month divided by, uh, we want to get to minutes here, because we were live for maybe like two or three minutes. So 30 times 24 times 60 gets us to minutes. And then add some parentheses for, for legibility. So let's say times five minutes. And then we had 100 of those going. So that cost us 29 cents, that having those 100 servers live for for five minutes. Um, so you, know, you can see that it's really easy to do load testing. You could very easily test your architecture to see if it's going to scale well. Um, super, super easy. And 
That is the bill. 29 cents is what you will be billed. Heroku bills by the second. So that's the, the charge that would go through there just for using 100 servers for five minutes. So let's go back to our, our slideshow, hopefully. Maybe. It's minimized. Go. Just got to get it from the. Is it down minimize it. What? Oh. Oh, you can't get it. Oh, of found it. All right. All right, let's talk about. So, one last piece, or actually, there's two last pieces we're going to talk about Heroku data services. So, data is becoming more and more important to businesses and being able to handle huge amounts of data. Uh, large streams of data just coming in, and then you know ultimately be able to make decisions with that data. That's that's the important piece of it. Um, so you need a way to to tame that data, and, and similar to writing code for a web application, you know you want a really easy way to um, capture, manage, organize, store that data so that it can be introspected or looked at by business users um, or your DBAs or whoever whoever wants to dig into it. So. Heroku has a couple ways that, 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 uh, that they can help you out with that. Uh, Heroku Postgres is a managed relational database service. We actually run the largest fleet of Postgres servers on the planet. Um, and so, so we'll take care of make sure it's up, make sure it's backed up, make sure it's highly available. And, and you can just worry about you know, defining the schema and defining how that data is going to flow and going to work and be exposed to your application or to your end users. Heroku Redis, a uh, managed key value store system that's very, very popular um, in, in uh, well, in many places now, but I think kind of most popular in Redis and JavaScript right now. Um, and you can add them and, and take them away uh, as you need more, more scale, more size, or shrink them as you need to. Um, Apache Kafka on Heroku is our newest offering. We released this to general availability last week. We've been betaing it for most of the summer. So I, as like a, as a developer and kind of a nerd myself, I've always wanted to play with Kafka, but I've always been intimidated by the complexity of like configuring it and setting it up and tuning it. And it's this big hairy like thing that runs in the JVM, and I'm not that comfortable with Java or Scala. Um, so Heroku has a managed service for Kafka now, where in 15, 20 minutes, half an hour, you can have a fully set up, tuned, and um, managed cluster. Uh, Apache Kafka cluster that, that you don't need to worry about, that you can, you can begin using and sending you know, hundreds of thousands of messages into per second. And it'll, it'll, it'll take that, buffer it, um, and make it available to any other processes that want to read from it. Um, in the Heroku booth, there's a Heroku data services booth where they're talking about Kafka if you want to learn a little bit more about that. Heroku Connect, maybe some of you have heard of. We talked a lot about this last year at Dreamforce. Uh, Heroku Connect is kind of how you bridge data in your Salesforce instance with um, a Postgres database on the Heroku side. So, you know, say you have your system of record, your customer data in uh, Salesforce, and you want to expose a subset of that data through uh, a, a cool little web app or something like that. You can do that with um, Heroku Connect. And again, it's a fully, fully managed uh, bi directional synchronization service. Yeah. That's it for data services. Yeah. What else? I think so. Yeah, yeah. So I just want to touch on a couple last things. Um, maybe you have picked up on the themes here. We've been pretty subtle about it. Uh, Heroku really has kind of always been about developer happiness and productivity. Um, I personally find that um, I'm a lot more productive when I don't have to think about these things. I'm a developer myself. So I, I really cherish that about our offerings. But I just wanted to talk about two things really quick, um, two of our newest offerings that are in this vein. Heroku Pipelines is kind of, uh, well, it's just a good way to, to chunk up your environments and promote code through a pipeline up to production, say. Uh, combined with another product called Review Apps, lets you spin up lightweight, disposable apps to run QA against, smash it with some testing, do whatever you like with it, but you can easily scale them back up and down on pull reviews against, uh, sorry, pull requests on GitHub. Um, together, they kind of, coalesce into a thing we call Heroku Flow, which is one of our theories on continuous delivery. Uh, also, I think very, very recent, just a month or so now, we released Heroku Teams, which is kind of a smaller uh, idea on organization. So what it really gets you as business owners is consolidated 
uh, billing, and also a collaborative environment for your developers to work together and use all these tools together. Um, I, don't know that I, I know this is kind of a whirlwind tour, and we didn't go super in depth, but we will both be at the booth later. And we have a small purple army over there, and we're happy to do demos on any of this stuff if you have, if you have any questions. And that's yeah. all we have. Yeah. But come, come we're also here to take questions. Any, any questions? Nope. Yeah. I don't know if we have, oh, we have a microphone oh. here. <clears throat> Hello. Can you, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. My, my name is Vish. And, uh, just a quick uh, background to our own environment. We are very happily settled with Amazon. And a lot of what you folks are saying here is going head to head against AW, EC2 and S3, S3 yeah, both. And yeah. we are heavy users of both. Yeah. What, if any, compelling reasons exist for us to even think about migrating? Yeah. Because we may just as happily do a connect. We do have a need to bi directionally sync, right. or at least access data once in a while. Yep. Yeah, so that's that's one way, right? So um, we have many customers who you know have um, a big infrastructure built out on AWS, and maybe they start doing a few smaller projects um, in Heroku. Maybe it's for prototyping stuff. Maybe it's for using Heroku Connect um, so that they, you know, so you don't have to worry about man writing and managing the code to talk to the Salesforce APIs. Um, you can let let that happen kind of transparently behind the scenes. Um, uh, and so, yeah, you can use both together um, and then figure out what works best for your team. We have some, some customers that have continued using both AWS or other um, kind of infrastructure as a service providers and Heroku. And we have some that have moved all the way over to Heroku and they, they love it there. And then their, their previous ops team has moved on to focus, um, uh, a few of them continue to focus on managing the Heroku environment. But now the ops team can focus on, one of them actually is, is working on be creating um, developer efficiency tools. So kind of instead of the ops team focusing on this infrastructure, they can build tools that are helping the team develop things faster, um, you know, get their code moving faster from a development raw state to a, a production kind of refined, polished state. So um, yeah, it doesn't have to be one or the other for sure. There's you know this this world where they kind of coexist, and um, and it's very easy to connect the two. Also, we we um, uh, most of our infrastructure also lives on top of AWS or in AWS. So we're kind of just this this nice layer to make the developer's job easier um, on top of all that infrastructure. Does that help? Yeah. Thank you. Good question. Any more questions? All right. Cool. Thanks, everyone, for, Thank for visiting. Come, out over, come over to the booth and check us out.